Hello everyone. In this video, I'll talk about linear transformations. So first of all, what is a transformation? Well, it's a rule that assigns vectors to different vectors. The notation for a transformation is something like this, a transformation that takes an n vector into an m vector. For example, suppose we have some sort of transformation taking r2 to r3 given by something like this. Then, according to this transformation's rule, a vector such as the vector 1, 2 in r2 will get sent to this vector in r3, 3, 3, negative 1. Here's another example of a transformation. Suppose we have a transformation from r2 to r2, and the rule of the assignment is the vector v gets transformed into a vector which is v rotated by 90 degrees counterclockwise. If this is our vector v, then the vector tv is given by this vector. So it's simply rotated by 90 degrees. In coordinates, it would be 1, 0 gets sent to 0, 1, so something like this. In linear algebra, we want to restrict our attention to studying linear transformations. So linear transformations are special types of transformations. The definition is if we apply the transformation to a sum of the vectors, then it is the same as applying each transformation to the vectors, then taking their sum. And another requirement for a transformation to be linear is that if we scale the vector, before the transformation, then it's the same as scaling the vector after the transformation. Suppose we are given this transformation. Let's check if this is linear or not. In order to do so, we need to first have two vectors. Let u be the vector 1, 2, and v be the vector 3, 4. t of u plus v would be t of 4, 6, because we add the components of the vectors. And this vector, according to this rule, gets transformed to uh, this component squared, so 16, and x plus y, so 4 plus 6. And we need to check if this is equal to t of u plus t of v. So we need to compute t of 1, 2, and t of 3, 4. t of 1, 2 is the first component squared, and x plus y, so 1 plus 2. And t of 3, 4 is the first component squared, and x plus y. So we get 10, 10, and they are not equal to each other. So this is not linear. Now let's look at this example. Let's see if this is linear. In order to show that something is linear, we must show that the vectors split for all vectors. So we'll want to do this a little bit more abstractly. So let u equal the vector ab and v be the vector cd, t of u plus v is equal to t of a plus c and b plus d. According to our assignment, the first component is the sum of these two, and the second component is given by their difference. Now let's check what t of u plus t of b is equal to. So we have t of a, b will be a plus b and a minus b, and t of c, d is c plus d and c minus d, and so in fact they are equal. Next we need to check that scalar multiples can move outside of the transformation. So let's c be some scalar. We need to see where this vector will get transformed to. This will go to ca plus cb and ca minus cb. But since c is being multiplied to both components, we can factor it outside, but this is simply c times t of ab. And so it's linear with respect to scalar multiplication. So both properties hold, and so the transformation is linear. Now we do a very important example on linear transformation. So let a be an m by n matrix. That means m rows and n columns. And so these will be the columns of A. Let x be a vector in Rn. The entries will be x1 to xn. And we define a linear transformation t 
from Rn to Rm. So x transforms into the vector a times x. Now remember that multiplying a vector by a matrix is defined to be writing out the linear combination of the columns of the matrix A with the weight as the entries of your vector. And this is a vector in Rm because while there are n many columns, each of these columns will have m rows. And so this will have m entries. Now, the important fact is that a linear transformation defined in this way is a linear transformation. So let's show that. Let y be the vector y1 to yn. Then we will compute t of x plus y. The vector x plus y is written out as something like this, where we add component by component. And now, uh, according to our linear transformation, this will be a linear combination of the columns of A times these scalars as the weights. So the column of A1 times x1 plus y1, the column of A2 times x2 plus A2, all the way to the column an, xn plus yn. But these are just scalar multiplications. So in our uh, property of vector addition, c plus d times the vector b would be just c times b plus d times b. For a more concrete example, let's say 3 plus 4 times the vector 1, 2, 3 would just be 3, 1, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. And on this side, this would be 7 times 1, 2, 3. If you multiply in both sides, you'll see that they're equal. So using that property, we can further write this out. So we split each sum. But now we can collect all the weights with x1 and all, all the weights of y1 separately so that we have the linear combination with weights x1 to xn and the linear combination with weights y1 to yn. But that is nothing more than just ax plus ay, which is just a transformation of x and t of y. So we have shown that t of x plus y splits as t of x plus t of y. And to show that scalars will also move outside the linear combination is not too difficult. It's a very similar procedure. And so this will be left as a good exercise. And so having these properties verifies that t is a linear transformation, that defining a transformation as the matrix multiplication with x vector is a linear transformation.